Hi there. So if you saw my video from December, um, you'll know I'm Aaron Quigley. I'm the head of school here in computer science and engineering. You're getting the full acoustic surround sound at the moment with the trees and the birds and the trucks that are coming and going because they're setting up for a week, which will begin in about 72 hours from now. So if you're coming on campus, please make sure to come and visit CSE and sit under the tree. It's a lovely place to be, even if it actually starts raining on your head. So if you're new to CSE, uh, welcome. Uh, places to get information. I'm told students don't watch these videos for very long, so I'll be brief. Um, key things for changes that have happened over the last sort of 12 months. New staff, some new equipment inside there, uh, some new refurbishments in there, and some changes to the way the school is working and a new school strategy. But if you're new, if you've never been to computer science before and you've got questions, make sure to know where the nucleus is. So figure that out, know where the nucleus is, because that's a really important point of contact for when you're coming on campus. The next thing I would say, you might not all know about this, is but the engineering faculty has put in an Eng Connect facility for students who have questions. So you can go onto the engineering website and then type in your questions directly and there'll be somebody to help answer those questions on the chat facility directly in Eng Connect. I'd also say, I spent a very scary uh, conversation this morning listening to the cybersecurity team within the university talk about the threats that you're under, that I'm under, the university is under, the hacks, the cyber attacks, all the things that in part we teach our students in our masters and our postgraduate courses and our some of our honors courses about how to do but also how to protect against but the fact that now of course the university is actually facing those so I'd encourage you to go and have a look at the cybersecurity internet page just to make sure from day one you don't get compromised you want to start as you mean to go on and you basically want to make sure that you don't lose access to your data you don't actually become a vector for other people to come and attack the university or your family or anybody else you don't want to be have your personal machines held up for ransomware I guarantee you that's not something you want to have in your first year of university as a fond or unfond memory I would also say that some interesting things that you will see in the course of the year ahead is the faculty is putting in a new student industry engagement program for postgraduate students. So what does that mean? Well, just two days ago, three days ago, the federal government announced 1,800 new places for PhD funding to connect uh, PhD students with industry to um, basically pipeline the research that we do out into the industrial sector. So there's 1,800 new people who are going to be joining the university sector over the next uh, year or two who are going to be doing PhDs more linked to industry. Um, I'm also, since I've come here, like a big, big university, lots of things, lots of exciting things happening in engineering. Behind this building, the SunSwift car, when you come on campus, make sure you hop over into Willis Lane. And when you're doing that, be careful of the uh, glass partition, the glass roof, which is currently being repaired because it nearly fell down a month ago. Um, so when you get over there, have a look, walk along and have a look for the new SunSwift car. It looks absolutely incredible. Um, and again, a team of students are working on that. So if you're joining us and you don't know what the vertically integrated project programs are, have a look for those. Go on the engineering website and you'll hear this again and again. Find the virtually integrated projects and then actually figure out is there a place for you in second, third or fourth year to actually get involved in a virtually integrated project. Because SunSwift is one of them, but there are 40 of them. So there's lots of opportunities to get engaged in there. So there's been lots of changes in the school. Um, the student societies and the student reps have asked me to say like, oh, you guys have you know, spent all, of the, all the year basically building up this new school strategy. Why don't you publish it so all the students can see? And there's so much detail in there. I just wanted to pick out six pieces. So there's six aspects of the school strategy around impact, around optimizing how we use our time and our resources, around collaboration, around the student experience, thinking about what that means for you, thinking about talent and diversity, and thinking about the school culture. So I just want to pick out six things that we've actually done underneath those six pillars. So for impact, we're hiring right now, and actually the job closes this day week, an industry engagement manager. That person, maybe is an alumni, maybe is somebody who's working out in PwC who's coming back to join us, is going to help basically translate the research that our masters, PhDs, undergraduates, and postgraduates and staff work on and getting it out into the world to make the world a better place. On optimizing our time and resources, we've been thinking about 
the concept mappings that we actually have that somebody's big youth that's just coming on campus I've been thinking about the concept mapping that we have with respect to all the teaching that we do we have something somewhere between 120 and 140 courses along with UNSW online along with Western Sydney University teaching along with the um, new um, Australian Graduate School of Engineering which is going to start doing short courses similar to what the Australian School of Management does the AGSM so if you're one of our alumni watching this that's maybe something you actually want to think about doing tapping into the AGSC courses that are going to start ramping up in 2022 and 2023 and what will they actually look like you know day courses five day courses two week courses for continuing professional development so we're trying to do a concept map right now in terms of the education committee basically mapping out what is our curriculum where's where are we doing our teaching and then what are new things that we maybe want to bring in and as I'll talk about some of the new staff that we've hired we're thinking about actually how to staff those things as well and what the future of computer science computing education looks like because you know we have the computer science degree the software engineering degree bioinformatics degree computer engineering degree we've got master's programs and we've got and these continuing professional development courses UNSW online Western Sydney University lots and lots of things we need to map out what we're actually doing and then draw it together and see if there's redundancy see if there's extra things that we can actually add in so that's something that's going to be happening over 2022 if you're just new you might see the impact of it in let's say third year after we've changed some of our courses if you're if you're on the way out well know that the future students that we're teaching um, will have new forms of teaching and learning and education that they're going to be getting ready for and that means they're much more employable in the future in terms of collaboration we're looking at how the current set of uh, 70 80 staff along with hundreds of postgraduate students and research staff are actually all collaborating so uh, Yang and uh, others are basically building up a co-citation map of what we're currently doing looking at the student experience um, Oliver um, who's our course director for the uh, computer engineering degree along with John Shepard who's our deputy head of school for education in terms of talent and diversity uh, professor Gerna Heiser helped set up um, the ideas here but then we brought in uh, Lena Yao so it's professor Lena Yao along with Jake Renzella who's one of our new education focused um, associate lecturers here in the school and together the three of them are actually now starting to work on what how do we improve the talent and diversity that we actually have within the school what does that mean well you start talking to people when you start doing that so um, I've been talking to the head of uh, equity diversity and inclusion Eileen Baldry at the University and I'm going to bring that group to talk with Eileen to see what does the University do because the University as a whole is doing a lot around equity, diversity and inclusion, but then so too is the faculty. So Rita Henderson is uh, the Deputy Dean who's actually looking after equity, diversity and inclusion across all of engineering, not just computer science. And then we have our own group that's actually looking at this as well. So there's lots of different people who are looking at it different ways. And what's nice for us is we have an industry advisory board and our industry advisory board has lots of people from Vodafone and Microsoft and Google, formerly from Google from um, people who serve on the Uruguaya board, uh, an indigenous uh, ICT company here in Australia that I'm also sitting on the, on the board of. And together, they've all tackled these kinds of questions around how do you improve the diversity and the inclusiveness of the environment that you actually have. So right now, several of those people are actually gonna be meeting with them. One of them, Rob Pike. Um, and if you know your computer science history, uh, Rob is the inventor of the Go programming language who happens to live here in Sydney. And uh, Rob sits on our board and Rob is going to come and give advice uh, along with Pia Sito, who's working with Vodafone. And Pia is also going to come and give that group advice. So when you do these kind of new activities, you learn from everyone else. You learn from what's happening in industry. You learn from what the faculty is doing. You learn from what the university is doing. And you draw in all those ideas. And then you basically try and embed new things that you can actually do inside the school for the students, for the postgraduate students, for the casual staff members, for the permanent staff members, for everybody. The last pillar, you see there's lots of activities, it's not just me, 70 people, hundreds of casual staff members, thousands of students, it's a big team effort that I'm talking about here. In terms of um, improving the culture in the school, um, it's small things like putting in, let's say, 360 degree uh, reviews that people can actually engage with. You've never heard of a 360 degree review? Well, if you're interested, Google what that actually means. Because we've got about a dozen staff members who are about to start doing 360 reviews to actually understand where their strengths and weaknesses are, where their opportunities are to develop and grow as academics. Because my job, basically, is to help all of the other academics and the professional staff and the technical staff in CSE do their jobs better. And when they're doing their jobs as best and most effectively as they can, it helps you in your learning. It helps you in your career progression. It helps you in the courses that we're actually uh, designing, in the programs that we're actually delivering, in the thinking we have around our research, the impact of our research, how we actually engage with industry, how we support the student societies that we have. So it's kind of, it's a big team effort. So my job is really to help those people help you if you're watching this as one of our students. So 
that's the kind of big strategy stuff. Um, and it goes on day to day. We just had an update um, on Tuesday uh, with an external group that came in to talk to us to figure out how we're, are we on track. Lots of those track pillars are on track. Some of them are not on track, so there's more work to be done there. But we look at it every month uh, at our school meetings. Uh, we track to see where the progress is. So if you watch one of these videos in T1, or I'm sorry, T1, we're about in T1, T2, I'll do another update and tell you where the strategy is and if we've had any major advances. So what are other interesting things that have happened since my uh, Christmas update? Well, lots of things. It's incredible. It's been busy January. Um, we're sponsoring the Women in AI Awards. That will actually uh, be awarded on the 31st of March down in Melbourne. Uh, we're sponsoring the Cybersecurity Prize because that's a big and important topic because we have a new institute here in UNSW around this. Uh, Toby Walsh is one of the judges. Uh, Lena was one of the award winners from last year. So we're we're interested to see what will happen in 2022. Um, we had a number of discovery projects. Um, Wen, Shumin, Salil uh, were involved in some discovery projects. And what does that mean? Well, those discovery projects are very much at the cutting edge, forefront research. And what happens then is they take the money that they got and they use it to employ people. Uh, they employ research fellows, they employ PhD students, uh, they employ other uh, researchers to do work on those projects to advance knowledge. Some of it's around radar, some of it's around new forms of data science, some of it's around the internet of things. Um, we've also had uh, Gernot and Alex and Oh, this is terrible. Um, Gustavo, uh, we're involved in three million dollars worth of research funding that came in just um, over the um, New Year's break, and that's from industry locally, industry internationally. Um, a few weeks later, uh, Somya and Eric were involved in 2.2 million dollars worth of research grants that came in, uh, all around biomedical uh, research, biomedical informatics research, and that's from different research councils. One of which is under uh, embargo, so I can't mention which it is. But overall, and again, what does that? do it pays for the time for researchers it pays for some equipment it pays for some um, maybe some compute but it depends on the actual project as to where the money is getting spent but it all gets budgeted and it all gets spent well I can tell you that because often it's the taxpayers money you're if you're a taxpayer thank you and that's sometimes where the money is actually coming from other interesting things, um, Shri and some of his colleagues in the Garvin Institute just published a paper about a thing called Slow 5. If you don't know what that is, again, Google's your friend, Slow 5, and you'll see what that is. New file format, big deal, new file format. Yeah, okay, big deal. This thing, A, gets published in Nature Biotechnology. That's a very big deal in terms of uh, where it's being published. But also, it allows people to do DNA analysis 30 times faster than we could do in the past. 30 times, you're thinking, yeah, big deal, 30 times. That's a big deal right now when we're in the middle of a global pandemic. Actually being able to do DNA analysis faster matters for bioinformaticians and matters for everyone around the world. And everyone is now pivoting to start using their new file format. Uh, Toby became a fellow of the Royal Society of New South Wales. Um, Harris took over as the interim director of the new UNSW.AI Institute. That's going to be a big thing. I'll talk more about that in the months ahead because that's just beginning. Uh, Salil is the lead on a Trailblazer grant application. Again, I'll talk more about that in the future. Uh, if that goes ahead, that'll be a, a quite a big deal for the university. Uh, Wenjie starts her future fellowship um, and will be taking over as deputy head of school for research and operations, I hope, uh, in the next few weeks to help me do my job so you get a better experience. Uh, we had eight DECRA grants go in. You don't know what those mean. Again, it's a big deal for us. Uh, we've had new staff members join. So yeah, as a student, that's maybe something that you really do care about is, you know, who's going to be teaching you now? You can go on our website and you can see, oh, these are all the people that are currently there who I can get taught by. These are people I can get supervised by. These people I can maybe do virtually integrated projects with. But what's not, of course, on the website are the new people. Sashmita Ruj just joined us uh, where she was previously a senior research scientist in CSIRO and we brought her into computer science as a senior lecturer in cybersecurity. So she just joined us last week. Ding Wen Tao um, is going to be coming to join us sometime in August after he gets his visa sorted out and he's joining us from Washington State University in the USA. Now Ding Wen is very interesting because he does a lot of work in high performance computing. He has won some of the most prestigious prizes as an early career academic in high performance computing, IEEE awards, top 100 awards. So if you're interested in high performance computing in the next generation of high performance computing, parallel computing, all this kind of stuff, keep an eye out for Ding Wen once he arrives here figure out which courses he's teaching and figure out how to get involved maybe if he's doing virtually integrated projects or other types of thing but don't 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 swamp him because he he's only he's only starting in August uh, we've also got people like Michael Yu and Ali who are joining us as education focused um, academics here for the year ahead now uh, 
Ali, for example, is going to be working on exploring uh, what virtual reality experiences might look like. Because one of the things we did was we invested a lot of money in buying new virtual reality equipment that we have in one of the labs in here. But we want to think, how would a hybrid learning experience look like? So if you are in a lab here, what does being in VR here mean if you're also wanting to be in VR at home and let's say if you wanted to be in VR overseas? What would that kind of hybrid learning uh, environment look like? So Ali's going to be doing some research and thinking about that and then testing that out and then trying to embed that those ideas into some of the courses, maybe computer graphics for example, that he's going to be teaching in T3 this year. Um, an interesting person that we had join us and I hope you do Google this guy's name, uh, Sebastian Sequoia Grayson. Uh, so Sebastian joins us uh, just again last week as a senior lecturer in what's called epistemics. Now, if, you're, if you know what epistemics is already, um, I, I definitely want to meet you. If you know what the term epistemics means, even before I've said it, before you've gone and Googled it, I definitely want to meet you. So come find me at one of the CSE sock barbecues one day and you can come up to me and go, yeah, I knew what epistemics were, were before I had to go and Google what that meant because I'll be very impressed if you know what that term means. Um, it means the, uh, it's the informaticians, computer scientists way to think about the discovery of knowledge and what does that actually mean. So Sebastian actually has a background in logic, in ethics, in philosophy. So why is he in a school of computer science? Why? Now, I'll let you think about that for yourself and think about it in terms of the ethics that you want to be exposed to, in terms about the ethics of AI, the ethics of engineering, thinking about what can we learn from somebody who studies logic, what can we learn from stu somebody who studies philosophy, and how can we actually use that to make us better computer scientists, better software engineers, better bioinformaticians, better computer engineers. Think about that. I'm not going to give you the answer to that one because um, I want you to figure that out for yourself. Last couple of things, um, of course, you know, all good things come to an end. Unfortunately, Mark Chi is no longer with us. Mark has gone back to another adventure. We're hopefully going to see him around the campus from time to time, but he's not going to be around to teach. But we have new staff. Uh, we expand in one way and we lose people another way. We'd love to see Mark back one day. I'm sure many of you would as well. And he's helped thousands of you. If you're watching this and you're a second or third or fourth year, he's helped thousands of you um, get onto the path that you are on now. But there's many other staff members that we have um, and we look forward to hopefully seeing the success that Mark has in his career in the years uh, and months ahead. That's it from CSE. Um, I think that's a pretty good update for January. Not every month looks like this. It, February might be a little quieter because we'll, we'll all be busy uh, teaching you. Um, if you're one of the master students who's watching this and you're doing data structures and algorithms, I look forward to seeing you in about 12 days time. Uh, I'll be teaching data structures and algorithms in C. Looking forward to it. It's good fun teaching. Um, great opportunity to influence the next generation. And I think that's the same for all my colleagues. We're all looking forward to seeing you uh, whenever you get back on campus. Last thing I would say is if you do come back, please, Follow the rules. Please, 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 please follow the rules. Um, I met the father of one of our alumni and his son is 24 years old and graduated a couple of years. And unfortunately, his son went to the funeral of one of his friends, uh, who was another 24 year old who died from COVID. And depending on no matter how old you are, you might feel invincible, but please just follow the rules when you come on campus. If we ask you to wear masks indoors, wear masks indoors. If we ask you to sit a ma wear a mask when you're, until you're sitting down and eating, please do that. The fact that there's nobody around doesn't mean anything. In a campus like this, I sit in my office all alone and I still wear my mask. Why? Well, because there's somebody sitting in the outside office and the air is circulating between us and students come and go and staff come and go and I don't want to give them anything and they don't want to give me anything. It's not perfect, but it's the smallest things that we can actually do. And if we keep everyone safe, um, then hopefully we'll make it through all of this together because we want you to graduate. That's the point here. You come, you study here, we want you to graduate. We don't want anything else bad to happen to you. So please follow those rules when you're here. Maintain social distancing, wear your mask where you can, where you can when you can, when you should. Um, that's the societies, make some friends, study hard, pay attention to your timetable, uh, pay attention to your work. Um, there are many, many people here. Again, Nucleus for help, Eng Connect for help. And I look forward to seeing you at some social events on campus. And if you're coming on campus for a week, I look forward to seeing some of you then. Bye.